In this video, we'll learn how to solve problems in Hamiltonian mechanics. How do we get from a Hamiltonian to writing equations of motion for the system? Since the Hamiltonian depends only on Q and P, we'll want a way to express the Lagrangian in terms of Q and P. We'll start with the Lagrangian, written in terms of Q, Q dot, and T, which is equal to the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. A general Lagrangian can be written as one half some function a of q times q dot squared minus u of q. Then the generalized momentum pi is equal to dl by dqi dot, which is equal to a of q times q dot. This lets us rewrite q dot as a function of q's and p's, which is equal to p divided by a of q. If the Lagrangian doesn't depend on time, then the generalized momentum p is equal to the derivative of the kinetic energy with respect to q dot. Then to express the Hamiltonian as a function of only q and p, we can replace each q dot with the equation for q dot we derived here. So the Hamiltonian is given by p times q dot, which is a function of q and p, minus the Lagrangian, which is a function of q and q dot, which is also a function of q and p. To derive equations of motion for this system, we'll look at how the Hamiltonian changes as we vary both q and p. First, we'll look at dh by dq. This is equal to p times dq dot by dq minus the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to q plus dl by dq dot times dq dot by dq. We'll use the definition of generalized momentum along with the Euler-Lagrange equations to simplify this. First, this term dl by dq dot is equal to the generalized momentum. So the first term and the last term cancel each other out. Then from the Euler-Lagrange equation, this term is equal to d by dt of dl by dq dot, which is equal to minus the rate of change of the generalized momentum. So our first equation is dh by dq is equal to minus p dot. Likewise, the rate of change of the Hamiltonian with respect to the generalized momentum is given by q dot plus p times dq dot by dp minus dl by dq dot times dq dot by dp. Since dl by dq dot is equal to the generalized momentum, then these two terms cancel out, and we're left with dh by dp is equal to q dot. These last two equations are called Hamilton's equations. This is a coupled set of first order equations that tells us how to evolve the position and momentum of a physical system. What if our Hamiltonian is higher dimensional? Now the Hamiltonian is a function of the vectors q, which runs from q1 to qn, and p, which runs from p1 to pn. The Hamiltonian is the sum on i of pi times qi dot minus the Lagrangian, which is a function of the vectors q and q dot, which is itself a function of the vectors q and p. Hamilton's equations are now given by dh by dqi is equal to minus pi dot and dh by dpi is equal to qi dot. As before, this gives us a set of coupled first order equations, but now the total number of equations is given by twice the number of generalized coordinates times the number of dimensions in the system. Up until now, we've been making the assumption that the Lagrangian doesn't depend on time, which means the Hamiltonian is conserved. But what if this isn't the case? What if the Hamiltonian depends on time? The total derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to time is equal to the sum on i of dh by dqi times dqi by dt, which is qi dot, plus dh by dpi times dpi by dt, which is pi dot, plus the partial derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to time. 
from the definition of Hamilton's equations, this is minus pi dot, and this is qi dot, so these terms cancel out, and the total derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to time is just equal to the partial derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to time. Let me take a look at this again, only now we'll use the other definition of the Hamiltonian as a function of pi, qi, and the Lagrangian. Then the total derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to time is equal to the sum on i of pi dot times qi dot minus dl by dqi times qi dot minus the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to time. From the definition of the Euler-Lagrange equations, this is equal to the rate of change of the generalized momentum, pi. So again, these two terms cancel out, and we're left with the total derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to time is equal to minus the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to time. Then we find that the rate of change of the Hamiltonian is equal to minus the rate of change of the Lagrangian. This is a way to relate the dynamics of the Hamiltonian itself to the dynamics of the Lagrangian. In order to solve Hamiltonian problems, there are a few general steps you can take. First, choose generalized coordinates qi that work for your system. The second thing you do is write down the kinetic energy and the potential energy in terms of those generalized coordinates q and their derivatives q dot. From here, find the generalized momenta pi, which is equal to dl by dqi dot. Or if the Lagrangian doesn't depend on time, pi is just the derivative of the kinetic energy with respect to qi dot. This gives us the generalized momenta as a function of q's and q dots. But what we really want to do is eliminate the q dots. So we use the definition of the conjugate momenta to solve for the qi dots in terms of the p's and q's. Now we can write down Hamilton's equations as a function of p and q. If the coordinates don't depend on time, then the Hamiltonian is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. But if not, we'll need to use the definition of the Hamiltonian is equal to the sum on i of pi times qi dot minus the Lagrangian as a function of q's and p's. Lastly, you write down Hamilton's equations and solve. We can use the concept of ignorable coordinates to further simplify Hamilton's equations for certain systems. If the Lagrangian is independent of qi, then dl by dqi is equal to zero. And this is the definition of generalized force. From the Euler-Lagrange equations, the generalized force is equal to d by dt of dl by dqi dot, which is equal to the generalized momentum, which means that the rate of change of the generalized momentum is equal to zero. That tells us that the ith component of the generalized momentum is a constant of the motion. If this is the case, we call qi an ignorable coordinate. Likewise, if the Hamiltonian is independent of qi, then dh by dqi is equal to zero. And from Hamilton's equations, this is equal to minus the rate of change of generalized momentum. Then the generalized coordinate qi just evolves at a constant rate. In Hamiltonian mechanics, we can just ignore ignorable coordinates. We can leave them entirely out of our calculation since their dynamics is trivial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.